relationships between the four core municipalities. But it, it is important that it gets established and, and, and make certain that uh, financially it uh, is uh, solid, uh, because I think in that way then it can probably just carry on uh, uh, well into to the future. It's a, a great concept. It was at its, I think, the forefront probably when it started 35 years ago, and uh, uh, I think it's just a, a real testament to professionals working together for the greater good of, of all the citizens. Okay, seeing no more discussion. Yeah, it was an interesting um, exercise. I had a meeting with the mayors of Victoria, Squamalt, and Old Bay, and when we looked at the original document, uh, you know, the typeset on it was so old it took me back to high school with those um, duplicating machines used to have to crank around and the ink was purple, and I think if the document, uh, which was dated 1980, had been any older, it might have been written in, uh, with calligraphy ink. Uh, but so it's a 35-year effort now to start an update of this and to, to see where we can go to work together with our neighboring municipalities and combine our efforts. So, oh, I'll call it yes, yeah, the yeah. machines. Yeah. yeah, it was like, a, uh, like an indigo kind of purpley yep. kind of ink. And, uh, I know that it lasts because my mom kept everything and it's all in the basement. <laughs> so with that, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Motion's carried. Thank you so much. With that, we'll move to the next item. Madam Kirk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This next item is the Designing Public Consultation on the Financial Plan. The report of the Director of Finance is recommending that Council approve a single source of work to dialogue partners to design a meaningful community engagement process for the financial plan. And also to that Council approve a one-time resource request for the funding uh, required in the 2016 financial plan. First hand up. Uh -huh. Councillor Briggs. That's right. I think, uh, thank you Mr. Mayor, probably the reluctance to come forward is a bit of a, I guess, awareness by all of us that uh, good intentions which we set out on obviously come with a, a price tag. And uh, uh, as I was reading the document, I thought, oh my goodness, uh, we're going to embark on public consultation and, and really the first thing people are going to say is, yikes, you know, here you've spent money that I think maybe I wouldn't have necessarily um, agreed with. I'm going to wait and hear what uh, others uh, around the, the table say, but certainly I would be <coughs> here in this first year to, to do something pretty modest in that we're moving into our governance um, review and undoubtedly in the go-ahead years the way we consult with our public on budget uh, may form one of those sort of nuggets in our in our plan so I, I don't think there's um, necessarily any value at this time in investing money you know for something on a, a long-term basis but something that could provide good, valuable information for this year only. I think that's kind of the, the way I'm going on. Councillor Haynes? <laughs> yes, um, this is an interesting position to be in because uh, this initially came to the floor to um, help us and help our public be engaged in the process of understanding and giving input into the budget. And then, um, that's led to where we are today. Um, at the same time, we're about to undergo this large governance review, so I understand Councillor Bryce's point that maybe this could be folded into that. Um, I do recall at the time of this motion, which I, um, I, I recall at the time of this motion, there was a suggestion that to collect public input, maybe there was a mechanism around the idea of a town hall, which would be lower cost, it would let us hear lots of opinions, we can collate all those opinions and we'll avoid this cost. But the pushback was, well, to really understand the issue, to collect it properly, it would need some help from a consultant. So given that this is in front of us today and we see that approach and the cost of that approach, I wonder if we want to go back and consider an alternative mechanism, perhaps a town hall. If the objective is to hear from our public and we see their, their input on our budgetary issues and budgetary process. Councillor Durbin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'm the one who brought this to initially to uh, Council. 
And I brought it to council because of concern that uh, the public was largely unaware of how we formed a budget and indeed uh, the whole budget process. And up till now, the time for public input in the budget has been after it's been introduced uh, to council. And at that point, uh, the budget is fairly close to finalized, being finalized, and staff can, or council rather, can tinker with some matters here and there and so forth, but it, it becomes fundamentally a, a budget that staff, to their credit, has worked very hard on for a long period of time, and there it appears at council. Uh, we seldom get very much input because the perception of the public is this is a done deal, largely. And so my sense was that what we really wanted to do prior to budget, if not every year, then every two or three years, was to start the public uh, engagement at the start of the, public, the budget process. And first of all, to involve a fair amount of education, to let the public know this is how currently we are spending your money. This is what it does. This is, these are the services and other things that you get for it. These are the priorities that you have identified for us over time, and this is what you've agreed to. And then from there, to allow them to give input as to whether they saw those priorities as still being appropriate, or whether they felt there were areas that, that needed change. That we were still not providing the, the troughs and hitching posts for the horses, if you would. Uh, and also at that time, to allow the public to understand that if we made changes and cut taxes or did something uh, of similar nature or put more funds somewhere else, uh, there would be consequences elsewhere in the budget. And this is the kind of thing you might lose. So that they could make informed decisions on what kinds of services they expected and what kinds of taxes they were willing to pay for those things, which is really what it comes down to. Um, at the time, we really hadn't, and I brought it forward, we really hadn't established the governance committee that we have now. That came laterally after that. So I tend to agree with Councillor Bryce. Uh, I'm a little bit loath to embark upon spending a large amount of this time with the governance committee fairly soon to get up and start going. So I would be interested in looking at what can we do uh, fairly early in the budget process, at least to provide more education to the public and some opportunities for input, with uh, uh, perhaps holding the rest in abeyance and allowing the governance committee, which would logically look at that process, I think, to weigh in as to what they would do. Um, now, I, I don't know if if that's accomplished by option number one on here, and I would ask staff for clarification. Uh, but I didn't envision it originally as a huge thing. We didn't have a governance committee. I was simply looking at how could we make this more facile for the public to understand uh, the budget that we present. So perhaps staff could clarify that for me on how that smaller expectation that I brought originally could be accomplished at least to some degree while we wait for the fairly lengthy process the budget, the governance committee will undergo. Uh, through Mr. Mayor to uh, Councillor Grimm, I just want to sit here, sign your names are switched. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, That's okay, I, I, I recovered. <laughs> um, so the, the options that are provided in this report uh, came from the motion of uh, the council when we first started to talk about this topic. And so these are designed to uh, help council develop a consultation process. They are not the consultation process itself. So this is not about talking about the 2016 budget. That process started last June when we came forward with the guidelines. So uh, as, as Councillor Dermot has correctly stated, we're already well into that process. So really consultation needs to start as soon as the previous year financial plan is adopted. We get rolling right at that time. So what we were hoping uh, with the options that were provided here was to have an opportunity to uh, commit to the public participation policy that Council has and engage with the public about what do they want to see this process look like. 
So the, the very simple option is to talk to a few people who, it will be generally the people who come to your chamber uh, most evenings to connect with you. Those are the people who want to connect, as opposed to uh, doing more random and getting uh, a real representative group of the community to talk about how they would like to, excuse me, engage. Because I think, uh, as the previous report talked about, we can go with a full four-year rolling cycle. That's you know what the, the cities like Calgary and Edmonton are doing, which are full-on engagement processes on a financial plan, where you can do something very simple. We've seen some budget tools online. But this is designed to find out from the community what do they want, how do they want to engage with you. So we can do this the simple first one, but you're going to get a very um, small view from your community on how we want to engage with you. So we were trying to provide options so that you could fully stay within your public participation policy and have a robust process so that when you end up with, this is what public consultation on the financial plan is going to look like, your community is invested, they've said, yes, this is how we want to engage with you. This is the kind of information that we need. We want to sit around tables with you and talk about the issues as opposed to just filling in a survey. We don't know what the public what level they want to go to and what they're willing to pay for. That would be part of it. How, how much is this worth to you? Thank you. Um, yeah, and yet we do have that parallel process of the governance committee looking at um, all, all those kinds of issues. I am wondering if we had considered with something like this, referring it to a group like SCAN, um, uh, you know, to assist in a process of intermediate input, uh, input as to what kinds of measures we can do to improve the process while the, gover the governance committee uh, continues to operate. And, and really, uh, I'm loath to go through the whole process because then the governance committee is going to look and say, well, isn't this the kind of thing that we're covering? So, uh, with that in mind, I, I will move uh, option one at this point. Just a second. Councilor Burton, next on the list. Maybe I'll second it just for discussion. We have some major expenses, or major budget items coming down over the next couple of years, and that's probably a, a big concern of mine. And we also, like I had to mention, we have an ambitious, I say ambitious, governance review that we're just starting. And I guess I look at council and even that's only 27,000. That's a cheap one. But I look at it and say, it's 27,000, but what do we really get for it? And I guess in my mind, maybe I like to keep things too simple. But I'll be, as one thought, let council figure out the tax hike that we'd like to see this coming year. And then look at the community and whether it's scanner community associations and ask them, how do you see the money being spent? Okay? There are trade offs. And sometimes, and we've seen it before, you go to the public, and everyone wants something different. But there's a cost to it, and there's a trade-off. And somehow we have to help our public recognize that there are trade-offs, and but the money can be spent in a different way if they so choose. And that's the part I'd like to hear from them. Thank you. Thank you, but front of to Councillor uh, Brownoff. Um, Councillor Dermot, can you just uh, explain what exactly it is that you're moving? Because there's a recommendation here. There's two items, one and two, and then one is broken out into an A, B, and C. What is it specifically that you're moving? Uh, I was moving uh, number one, A, All right. uh, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> uh, approach number one in, in the prior page, page two. All right. And that's to be directed at SCAN? Uh, well, I hope that we would utilize uh, the existing resources and inspirationally in the uh, community as much as possible to kind of provide some ideas of what we could do as a good starting point to become more transparent on the budget uh, pending the full review. So Thank you. I think this is a good idea, and I'm wondering if we need to, s to spend any money at this point, if we can just simply send it to SCAN and then send it out to the community associations who we should be always consulting in order to find out what they believe 
as they attend these meetings so often, have so much valuable input for us. I would be comfortable with that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilor Brown? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I had all sorts of similar comments. Um, if I could, to staff, uh, Ms. Tinney, so our budget process for this budget year is well on its way. This is only going to be to, for us to get into a different sort of framework for the next budget year. Is that right? Uh, through the Mayor of Council, Brona, yes, we, would, we need to continue with the 2016 program that's uh, halfway through. Uh, I think that in this chart it shows, so yeah. the, the intention is that in April or May, once all of the work had been done and we came up with a recommendation, the public came with a recommendation to Council of what they wanted the process to look like, we would be ready to launch for 2017 in June when we start the next Your budget process. Okay. We didn't know exactly what that process was going to look like. Okay, so uh, I agree. I, I, uh, with the governance review happening, uh, I, I saw this as part of that as well. Uh, a referral out to all the community associations, not just members of SCAN, but there are a lot that don't go to SCAN, but to all of them to see if they have any suggestions and how we can improve it or how uh, engagement could happen. I think I uh, passed on to Ms. Tinney a couple of different versions of how people have done these reviews. Uh, Tofino, I think, I think it was Tofino, they, they actually took their community grant program and had the public involved with that. So these are the grants, these are the, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I do think that it's something we have to get to. But I remind everyone that on our council website, there's an excellent document called Municipal Budgeting 101. And it has a lot of information there. And uh, so I think uh, I don't really want to spend the money now. I want to see how the government's committee comes forward. And we could refer this uh, out to get some uh, basic information from all community associations. Thank you. Thank you, Council Plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I support the suggestion. I was going to perhaps propose that tonight we kind of maybe want to assault, we want to debate the merits of the report, but yet we kind of want to get into the guts of what's being recommended. Take this from Part A, B, C. So a motion to refer to FAP to do that was something I was considering. But I think uh, allowing our community associations to do that uh, is something that I would support. So yeah, why not? Thank you. Councillor Haynes? I'm on the same page with the colleagues. Um, at one time, I'd like to, having read the report, I'd like to thank the staff for their well-considered report. Um, and in a sense, it's, you know, you fulfilled our request and now we're changing what our thinking is. So thank you for your patience on that. Um, but before we dive into SCAN, um, which I think is a correct direction, let's also be aware that there are other people in the municipality that do come and speak here <coughs> to financial matters. So uh, if somebody wanted to give some input to the plan here, it wouldn't necessarily be a requirement that they're a member of SCAN. There may be others. So I'd just like to broaden the capture, if we may, um, to say if any individual wants to fill their boots and spend their days having a look at this and giving their, us their feedback, as they sometimes do, they would be welcome. Councilor Riddle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, uh, I have to say I'm not convinced that this is something we need to um, refer to, to scan, I think. I mean, Council really needs to make up its mind if we <coughs> want to ask the public or not. Um, we started this process months ago during the last uh, financial plan discussion and we said we need to change our process and so we asked staff to come back with some options for process and then we said well we're not quite ready to, to make a decision on what that process should look like so we're going to ask for some feedback so staff have gone away and, and come up with some options to get that feedback from the public and now we don't like that. Uh, I, I feel like we're playing this game of chicken with staff on, on what we're really looking for. Um, for me, I, I mean, I, I have tremendous respect for SCAN and the community associations. I was vice chair of SCAN years ago. I've been the vice president of a couple of community associations. 
they are the engaged folks with us. They are already our active partners in shaping the financial plan. We want to get past those folks. We want to get to people who are maybe checking out the website, looking for information, but are not engaged in our financial plan. Um, I, as I said, that is not meant as a disrespect to the community associations. That they provide tremendous value to, to Saanich and, and this council. Um, so I'd be quite happy to see us reaching out to get um, the, the, the uh, recommendation, guidance from the public on what, what our process is going to be. Um, I'm also a little bit concerned that we're now turning our governance review into a panacea. <laughs> that we're expecting that it's going to tell us the solution to all the problems. Uh, I, I don't know that public consultation on the financial plan is really in the scope of that governance review. Maybe uh, how, how council structures itself so that it can have a financial plan discussion, but I mean, we're really just asking people to tell us what, how they want to be engaged in the process. And, and I think that that's a very healthy thing to spend, spend a little bit of money on. Uh, I don't see this as a one-off investment. I see it as a long-term investment. Uh, where we can seriously improve our processes to get feedback from, from residents and hopefully get residents a lot more engaged in their budget. So uh, I, I won't be supporting the motion. I, I like that we've been presented with uh, A, B, and C. It's, it's classic uh, consultant. Uh, we, can, we get the Goldilocks options. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's just right. Um, so uh, my preference would be to, to not go with the, the large scale process that they recommend in C, but certainly to move beyond the self-selecting group so that we actually hear from, from the folks who are maybe not already engaged with us in the financial planning process. Okay, thank you. Uh, we certainly have a chicken and egg problem with the governance review and, the, and this, uh, this approach here today. The governance review is open-ended, so once we start this, it will affect the governance review somehow because we're going to be getting information from two different ways that it all has to be brought together somehow. I think we all agree that we want us to go beyond the community associations, and I think, um, you know, the community associations, I, I don't want to use the word guinea pigs, but I think, you know, they themselves would have to look at these recommendations and say to us, perhaps, that, well, we could do some of this work for you for free, and we'd rather do it for free and set you off in the right direction to allow you to then take a step further to broaden it, because they have their members and taxpayers alike, and they have to pay for it as well. So, um, we didn't hear a lot of commentary on that tonight, but I'm trying to use a bit of insight uh, on that and, and maybe um, predict what they might say. Um, two more speakers on my list here, uh, Councillor German and then Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there's another aspect of this in terms of time, and as um, we all know that it's too late to implement a different uh, consulting process for the uh, 2016 budget. It's already well underway. If we're going to have a consulting, if we're going to take any steps, even baby steps, to improve what we do with the public at the start of the process, we're going to have to set, have some kinds of steps in place for around April, May uh, of 2016. Plain and simple. If I look at the more lengthy processes here, they're not suggesting a process. They're suggesting a process of consulting the public to design the process. Uh, that's probably not likely to be ready for April or May of 2016. <coughs> maybe this, maybe not. We're approaching the holiday season and all sorts of things. So my hope in saying, and I wasn't even going to refer the various plans to, to uh, scan of the community associations and perhaps to others, but to devise a process that could have some better measures than we have now in place for the 2017 budget, to get the process started. Uh, and then whether we decide to go with something like this after that for the year after, or whether we decide to fold it into the governance review or whatever. Uh, this is something that's a longer process to look at a longer output, I think, and I doubt would be complete for the budget after 2016. So um, my hope would be uh, maybe we defer decision on this process, uh, simply say, let's go out to the community associations and scan and say, 
what are some quick and dirty improvements that we can make to have in place in the spring of next year to start the process of getting the public more informed and more involved in the budget process for 2017. Put a motion to postpone that. Well, there is my motion on before that I will vote against <laughs> when it comes up, and then when it's defeated, if it is, I will put forward another motion. Okay. Councilor Wernick. I'm not okay with the same. I thought it was probably much the same. I come back to the old question I do ask of uh, Councilor Dermott. Do you see staff going out to the associations? The associations reporting back to staff and staff coming with a much simpler, less complicated report for us to move ahead on. Councilor Dermot? Uh, um, that wasn't exactly my intent, uh, Mr. Mayor. The intent was to have an initiative with council to uh, uh, work with staff to draft a document to go out to the interest group to be decided upon, scan community associations, any others to say we are looking to involve our public more in the budget process. Uh, we would like to start that in spring of 2016. We would like from you some suggestions as to what could be done to uh, get the public more informed and more involved. Perhaps that's simple. I would support that if we could just make it a little simpler by recommendations from our associations coming back to staff and staff coming with a report. Madam uh, Clerk, could you please read the current motion back to us? <laughs> the current motion that's on the floor is actually 1A, which is the Council approve a single source award to dialogue partners to design a meaningful community engagement process for the financial plan based on option A, which is gathering some quick, basic input for those who easily self-select to participate. All right, thank you for clarifying. So with that, I'll call a question on that motion. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? Any opposed? I will show opposition as well, so that motion is defeated. Councilor Drummond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that Council uh, direct staff to approach, scan the community associations and uh, other uh, important groups that are identified to uh, ask those groups to identify to those groups that we intend to get the public more informed and involved in our budget process starting in the spring of 2016 and asking those groups to make suggestions about how we could uh, take some steps at this time to begin that process. And as Councillor Worden said, that would then come back as a report for staff. Thank you. Any discussion? Councillor Murdoch. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll speak against it. Yeah, you're probably not surprised to hear that. Just um, quickly, the reason for that is not that I'm not supportive of us talking to SCAN and not that I wouldn't want us to move quickly, but I think, you know, if we wanted to move quickly when this came to us in August, that would have been the direction then. Um, if we're, you know, we're, we're victims of our own delay in here, um, that it's not going to be ready for this year's uh, or next year's financial plan. Just because it's not going to be done quickly doesn't mean we shouldn't do it properly. Um, I think that we may get some really good suggestions on how we can improve the process in the short term, but to me it sounds like we're just looking at, at massaging, doing some tinkering. I thought that what we wanted to do was move to a bigger process and, and uh, a more engaged uh, uh, residents, uh, engaging residents more effectively in, in the shaping of their budget. So I'm, I won't be supportive. I'm, I'm not convinced that we're not just kicking this further down the road and we're not going to end up in the same position next year and that we're never actually going to do engagement in a different way. So I, I won't be supportive. Councillor Plant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, question through you to the mover. Can you please elaborate on other interested groups beyond SCAN, please? Councillor. Uh, I only put that in because uh, a number of council members thought that there should be other groups involved. Uh, I haven't identified them at this point. Uh, I can remove that from the motion if you wish, or uh, 
you know, other counselors could identify what they saw as such groups? Yeah, I don't, thank you. I don't, if I may continue, Mr. Mayor, I have no particular issues against that. I, I would be curious, maybe it's the, ch the Chamber of Commerce, maybe it's a business group, I'm not sure. I wouldn't be opposed to that, the more the merrier, in my perspective. Uh, I'd like to move an amendment, though, to, instead of starting in the spring of 2016, starting now, uh, and get the ball rolling. And yes, it may be too late to have significant impact on this year's budget, but let's show that we're serious. We're not going to punt it for six months. So I will move that amendment if there is a seconder. I think the intention was to actually bring it, uh, to, to have it happen now, and to collect the input and the feedback to uh, then apply in the spring of 2016. That's quite correct, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So the motion would have us begin this work immediately. My apologies, I, I withdraw my uh, suggested amendment. Councillor Haynes? Um, I appreciate um, Councillor Murdoch's point that we do want to reach beyond um, the people that we're already hearing from. And my hope would be, um, well, first of all, my caution is that we'll scan and the community associations have the time and interest to actually help us out on this project. I hope so. My knowledge of some of them, they do have the skill set, it's a case of time and interest. But the other thing is, how do we get past that group, which is the second point of the statement? It could be the Chambers of Commerce, it could be business groups, it could be individuals who stood up here and given us quite a detailed um, point of view of what they think the um, budget process would look like and budget ideas expressed. So having put the motion forward, I like the flexibility in that last sentence because we have to flesh that out. And maybe um, we could ask, the, um, we could put a call out for any individuals who want to give us that information, but also some guidance might come.